Hi everyone, my name is Michelle and I'm on my Loves You GB here on FlossTube, but also everyone on Instagram and Etsy as well. Welcome to the Sunday morning briefing. It is actually Sunday morning for me. Um, I normally film on a Saturday night, um, but yesterday I had the most fantastic stitchy day um, with the Kindred Spirit Stitchers um, and met some fantastic people. I'll tell you more about that later. And then I went out for some food with my friend last night. So um, yeah, I didn't get to film last night, but I'm doing it this morning because the internet here is considerably faster than the internet at home. So I'm hoping that I can film and upload reasonably quickly, but you'll probably know about that before I do. Um, so yeah, I went out with my, my friend last night. We had something to eat. So Lindsay, we've already caught up, so I don't need to worry about putting the update information at the beginning of the, red, of the video so you don't have to watch the rest of it. <laughs> that was my video advice from my best friend last night. Can you just put the life update stuff right at the beginning so I haven't got to watch the rest? So she's not a stitcher <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but yeah, I, we've already caught up. I don't need to add any more. So I went to this fabulous, fabulous stitchy day yesterday um, at a reasonably local hotel, actually just outside Gloucester. And I met uh, the lovely Caroline and Linda. Uh, Linda is a member or a founding member, created the Sampler Guild. So I'm now a member of the Sampler Guild and they do so many things, so many things um, that I can't wait. I can't wait to, we were just talking about samplers and uh, Caroline had bought some of her samplers. So we were looking at those and just the conversations were just amazing. They are both an absolute, wealth of knowledge and information and I can't wait to do some more days that they do and maybe a few trips we'll see um because they do some fabulous fabulous trips so I will put all of the information for the Sampler Guild and the Kindred Spirit Stitchers um underneath it was a quite a small retreat there's really about maybe 30 people there there's a couple of us who'd come just for the day um beautiful hotel lovely lunch and just a really, like, it was a stitchy retreat. So there was a lot of people actually actively working on things. It was, it was brilliant. There was a lot of chatting going on as well and some rowdiness, I have to say, but it was fabulous. So yeah, I'll put all the information down below. Get yourself linked into those people because they are super duper. Um, I have got a little bit of haul from yesterday, which I'll show you. Um, I've got so much to show you today because obviously last week I didn't film a video. I just ran out of energy. I just, I just ran out of energy. Nothing specific happened. And thank you to those people who sort of checked in just to make sure that nothing, nothing had happened. One lady said, I just had to check you're okay. You're normally like a German train. You're just normally so on time with everything. But I just, I just got to the end of the day and I just thought, I haven't, haven't got a video um, in me. I had stuff, but I didn't have a video. Because in fact, I've got a new release. I have actually finally gotten around to putting F.E. Pasley, Francis Pasley, uh, as a chart on my on my Etsy store. So that was the antique stitched in wool, red and green, beautiful. Uh, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with all thy might, which to me means stitch all the things. And this was my my finish. I decided to finish it sort of as a little mat uh, rather than frame it because. Yeah, you just can't frame everything. Um, so I have shown you this before with the promise that the chart would be in my Etsy store, but it took rather longer than I, that I'd hoped. Um, it's that time of year where you are lulled into a false sense of security in the fact that you think, yeah, I'm gonna have more time. And then all these little jobs just start coming out of the woodwork and you think, oh right, I'll just, I'll just get that done and then I'll have more time. I'll just get that done and then I'll have more time. And I bet you it'll be the summer holidays before I, um, actually get more time. So this is Evie Passy. This is what she looks like. You get in the chart, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit of history about Frances and some stitching information depending on what count you want to stitch her on. She is a Sheffield girl. Um, so that is the area that she comes from. Sorry if you can hear creaking because my mum is moving around upstairs. And I have included the chart and I have also included, after I've been requested them um, a few times, I have included the chart on one page as well for those of you who like to use um, devices. So the chart on one page isn't, 
well you could stitch from it as a um, you know just as a normal stitcher but you um, it's meant for somebody to put on a device so you don't have to worry about pages and things like that so that is Effie Pasley there so if you want her go and grab her I have also decided that I'm going to put again after some people have asked me um, you may remember that I did the schoolgirl sampler series with the three uh, red charts uh, let's see if I can remember their names M Hodgson May Modridge and Fanny Lacey and I also did a little simple um, really cute over one pincushion and that was a pack. Um, a few people have asked me if I will put the individual charts up separately so I will I'll put the three sampler charts up separately but I'm not going to put the pincushion up because that's the bonus if you like for buying the, the pack. So what have I been stitching? What have I actually done? I have finished and another start and another start and we're now into Christmas in July so I have been working on Bristol berries so after my last stitchy day which was in Bristol I had been working on some some Bristol stuff and obviously with um, Ruthie from Crow's Feet Stitching releasing her Bristol plus the associate, associated smalls I was in a bit of a, a Bristol mood and I do tend to find that when I don't have that much time for stitching, um, just a simple one colour chart is exactly what I need. So I had worked on this and managed to get it finished. Sorry, I haven't ironed every, anything. And this is the mini sampler that comes with the Bristol Smalls or the Bristol Berries number one. So it's that one so I've stitched this one and I've stitched this one I haven't stitched the squirrel um, although I will get around to stitching it but I'm not sure if I'm going to stitch Ruthie's squirrel that came in the smalls or whether I'm going to stitch the one that's in the in the berry I'm not sure so there's that one and then I started another one this is the way I stitch I just keep going on one piece of fabric until until it's full and then I start thinking about, ah, there we go. So I started another Bristol Berry, which is the one from Bristol Berries 2, which has got the B in the middle. So I've started that one. And that one won't take long to finish. Now you can see on here that I'm using, hopefully you can see, this is just a piece of 36 count white that I put in the dye pot for probably 30 seconds just to dirty it up very very slightly I just didn't want it to be stark stark white and I am using two different reds so Ruthie's elephant is in a darker red to some of the other pieces so I'm using sulky and I have my little Bristol stitching tin so the two sulky colors that I am using are the darker one is let's get that the right way up 169 and the paler one is 1035 so I think I might need to order another one of those soon and I just love just love my little my little bristle tin so I finished that and I started the bristol berries number three I have also been stitching a reasonable amount, and again, <clears throat> this is ironed, on the last Teresa Kogut uh, Patreon, there it is, which is a Stitcher's Garden. And it's on a piece of 32 count, no, it's a piece of 30 count. Weeks Dye Works, Old Weeks Cappuccino. And that is where I am with that one. I was going to iron things. My mum's always got an iron set up. But it was playing up a bit earlier, so I didn't want to, didn't want to risk it, to be honest. So it's not showing particularly bright in here today. 
but that is where we are. It's brighter than that, it's quite a deep, that's probably a better colour for the linen actually. So they were Teresa Kogut's Patreon charts for last month, were all surrounding like Stitcher's Garden um, and stitching. And this month they are all about Christmas in July. So I've printed them off and I will show you them in just a minute. So that's kind of what I worked on last week and a bit this week. Excuse me, let's just have a sip of my tea before it goes totally cold. I think it might be. I did manage to spill some on my top earlier, but that's a cross we'll both have to bear for now. Um, so. Yeah, that's kind of what I stitched last week and a bit this week. And then at the Stitchy Day yesterday, um, I stitched on three things. It is Christmas in July and I have got a couple of good Christmas in July plans. So um, I will show you those in just a second. So the first thing I stitched on in a sort of an attempt to try and finish this off is the jackrabbit from, I can never remember their name, Cottage Garden Samplings. I've been doing this stitch long for two years nearly and I still can never get the name right. Cottage Garden Samplings. I always think I come too close to the cottage threads. So there we go. So that is him or her. I think it's a him. I put in some of the extra purple flowers and I've, all I've got to do now is to put in, there's a little, there's one more purple flower that comes up here and then there's a little cabin like there is on all of them. And then that will be six months of them done. So that's 50% of them done. Am I gonna finish them this year? Not a snowball's chance in a gas oven, no. Um, am I gonna get another couple done? Probably. Probably. So if I could get to maybe eight completed by the end of this year, that would be, I'd be happy with that. So I worked a little bit on that. I feel like I've sat really low today. And then I wanted to work on my stitch along that I'm doing with Amanda, who is the Alba Stitcher. And I think I gave you Duff information last time I filmed. It's winter sampler in July is the hashtag. I watched her video um, yesterday and I think I got it wrong when I did it, when I said it. So it's winter sampler in July. And it is of course this, like that. I'll just show you my bag, put it in this bag. How fabulous is that? Nothing to do with winter, but it is uh, a fabulous Duet Rhino. So I've got the bags from the RSN if anybody's interested. So it's this sampler. I downloaded mine from um, their Etsy shop on PDF. Amanda got hers in a paper copy, uh, probably from Arts and Designs, because I know she gets a lot of her charts from Arts and Designs. Um, the called for is 36 count. Uh, so I got Vintage Country Mocker. I am doing mine on 36 count, but I am doing it on Affogato by Fibre on a Whim. Now, thought this yesterday I am at mum's I could get this surged so I'm gonna get this surged so if you remember I put god that looks awful I put the um, border in a couple of weeks ago because I really just fancied putting in a border that was really quite repetitive and I knew that come time to stitch it I potentially would not fancy putting in a border that's really repetitive so I did a little bit of work if I can show you more closely in this top corner that's a bit better so I've started to put in some of the flowers along the border and I've started on my first owl I'm not used to filming in daylight it's difficult there we go it's a beautiful stitch I can tell already that I'm gonna absolutely love it I wasn't 100% sure about the color of the wing when I first started stitching it because you can't see kind of the individual stitches but you can see the thing as a whole so I'm going to keep it as it is and that's where I've sort of been working at this top this top corner here so 
there's a lot it's a big sampler but also if you wanted to take out certain motifs for smalls you could I mean you could just stitch this top bit if you wanted to and that would make a beautiful winter piece and then these various different deer and foxes at the bottom there's so much you could take out of this sampler if you wanted to and you didn't fancy doing the whole thing it's beautiful so if you'd like to join us you are feel very very free to do so and then just follow along on the hashtag um, winter sampler in July and then we can all see everyone's progress I will wait an eye on mine before I put it on Instagram <laughs> and then the other thing that I am determined determined to finish this July is my Santas now I get probably more questions about the Santas than I do about anything um, that I stitched potentially more frequently reoccurring questions let me see if I'm trying to find the better copy of my charts so these are the four Santas they are from the Just Cross Stitch magazine the normal edition Uh, no. He's so reactive. He's so reactive. He barks like a mouse fart. He will bark. Um, anyway, where was I before I interrupted myself? They are the normal Just Cross Stitch magazine, November, December 2011. Now, mine are in paper format because you can get the Just Cross Stitch magazines on CD format, CD-ROM format. Um, I know that nobody has a CD-ROM anymore. <laughs> but you can buy them on CD-ROM format and it is well worth even if you end up having to buy the CD and a little CD-ROM plugin it's worth it because um, you get all of the magazine content for several years on the different CD-ROMs so those are the Santas I have finished two of them and I'll show you them so this is the first one that I finished Now these are stitched on 28 count fabric that I dyed myself because I have a frame which looks like a window pane and um, I want to put each Santa in the window. So I had to stitch them on 28 count because that was the size that fitted the frame best. So that is the first Santa that I stitched. Absolutely beautiful. This is the second Santa stitched the one with the pipe now the little beads on here are the snowflakes and I thought I was being terribly clever and put them on with invisible thread and then I ironed it and it turns out that invisible thread and the iron don't work so quite a lot of them have come off so I need to go back and reattach them with just ordinary ordinary thread and so the third one <coughs> that I'm working on looks a little bit spooky because they always do until you put the eyes in I was showing it to my friend last night and she's like for god's sake put the eyes in that so that's where I am so I didn't have any of this red here and not much of this um not much of this bit down here so I've got one and a half to do this this time I did a lot of this last night I was watching um, there seemed to be like a Noel Gallagher Oasis special on the TV last night quite late and Noel Gallagher's looking all right in his old age isn't he? Um, and then yes yeah, so I brought this in last night whilst watching that and so that is everything that I have stitched so my main Christmas in July plans are to do the Santas, both of them, non-negotiable. Remind me of this when we come to the end of the July and I haven't done them. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, that's definitely cold now. Um, and to work on the winter in, uh, I've forgotten it already. Winter in July sampler, there we go. That's the threads for the winter in July. and they are on these floss drops i can't remember who sent them to me sorry
Okie dokie. Winter in July. Let's just show you these. So these are Teresa Kogan. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I have a plethora of drinks because I've got a treat box as well. Um, these are Teresa Kogut's Patreon charts for July. And I may very well do one of these um, as my cross-stitch camp piece. So the, the prompt for um, <coughs> July was something that grows. So I think I could probably use any of these. So that was the first one. For those of you who are not familiar with Teresa Kogut's Patreon, um, it comes in three different tiers and you pay a different amount per tier. So this would be the, the chart that you get if you're in tiers two, three or four. Uh, this is the chart for tiers three and four. Beautiful, but quite big. Not something that I could finish in a month for Cross Stitch Camp. And this one is for tier four. So I'm in tier four. It costs me just under £20 a month, I think. Um, and I would have to be in tier four because I just have such a fear of missing out otherwise. But it is well, well worth it. And you get, <coughs> excuse me, I nearly choked to death yesterday on a piece of lettuce as well. So um, I'm still a bit wary of that. Um, yeah, so you get three, if you're in tier four, you get three charts a month, two colouring pages, which you can use either for colouring pages or for um, applique. You can, you could cut out and do wool applique with them or applique. Um, and then you get the option to buy an ornament a month and you also get um, a discount off her Etsy shop on anything else. So the discount increases, I think, as you go up through the tiers. But it's well worth it. I have more Teresa Kogut patterns than I'm ever going to stitch. But she then brings them out about like, 12 months later. So all I'm doing is buying what I would normally do ahead of time. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. My freebie today is from Pinker and Pumpkin Quilting and it is this little chart here. I'm going to hold it right back because I just I haven't got time to do any editing today so this has got to go perfectly. <laughs> so this is the one from Melissa from <coughs> and it's not is it? It's not going perfect. Pinker and Pumpkin Blogspot. So I'll put the link down to that one. She is an absolute wealth of little freebies, um, fantastic ideas. So if you don't follow her blog spot, you need to. Definitely go on and have a look at that. Right, what else have I got? So I've got a little bit of haul. I've got the fox and rabbit, um, what do we call that? Fabric of the month club, yes. Um, and I've got a treat box. <coughs> <coughs> I'm, not, I'm not pausing this, I'm not pausing. Sorry, I've been waiting for this one to come into Kathy Barrick's um, Etsy shop, Colours of Blue. And I think it's the, the start of a series, um, which t is absolutely fine by me. I absolutely love this. I think this looks great. Colours of Blue. So you've got Royal Blue, Prussian Blue, China Blue, Azure Blue, Flex Flowers Blue, Berlin Blue, Greenish Blue and Greyish Blue. And the chart comes where's the page um, in DMC and she's actually gone as far as looking at the sort of colour, exact colour temperatures of these colours and found the information. So she explains here um, how she goes about doing it. Um, it's from a book called Nomenclature of Colours written in 1814 by Abraham Gottlieb Werner. So, yeah, she looked at their, sorry, their RGB values and found the most appropriate DMCs for each of the colours. So I think it just looks fabulous and I can't wait to do that. That sort of hits a little bit of my nerdy, geeky, sciencey side. So I love that. I picked, got the toilet room there. I picked this up uh, yesterday at the Stitchy Day. Um, the, cross, the Sampler Guild had these for sale, so Lynn had these for sale through the Sampler Guild. And this is Willing Hands 2, and I, obviously 
then went straight on to Amazon bought Willing Hands One as well because um, as a member of the Sampa Guild they are doing um, stitch alongs for these and the first stitch along that they are doing is for this and you can buy the chart not the chart the paper pack the um, oh words today thread pack and the fabric and then Caroline is doing sort of upgraded instructions about how to do this brilliantly so you get good instructions for the book but she's doing some upgraded instructions as well um, there are some fabulous fabulous projects in here um, and they are going to do several of them as we go through the weeks and months I also particularly like the other one in, with my Bristol kick at the moment I like this little uh, Bristol bag which has got some English paper piecing on the bottom as well love 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 that this has got a lot of specialty stitches and um, almost like black work type stitches as well which I'm not as familiar with so I'm looking forward to having a go at doing some of these things they look amazing so yeah I got that one and then I ordered the first one as well I'd seen it before but never sort of pulled the trigger um, and as soon as I saw it and people working on the the projects I was just amazed absolutely bowled over like I said if you do one thing today join the sample guild so fox and rabbit fabric I have actually got two months worth to show you because the <coughs> May Club came late because they'd had some were they away or they'd had they'd had something had happened that had mean it had been delayed and then the June Club either came really early or it just seemed like it was really early so I've got both to show you I'll show you the May one first because I know everyone will have received their May Club I am in love with this fabric it's called Reflection um, this would have been the colour one. It's actually a little bit more greeny blue than it's showing. But it looks amazing. And it's actually not quite as dark as that. It, the real darks are showing up quite a lot on that. Um, let me see if I can get that bit to show. Because that's kind of a bit more of the right. There we go. Absolutely amazing fabric. I love that can't wait to find something to put on that I'm actually thinking about um, Halloween Quaker maybe something along those lines and then the neutral was called sea fog and that is actually showing up quite well it's a pale but it's got green in the background now I think actually lots of these projects from here are stitched on 36 count um <coughs> and i'm pretty sure let's try and find let's see something like that look really nice on that fabric now the next two are the ones that were posted out for me on monday or tuesday tuesday so I'm hoping most people have got them, but if you do get the Fabric of the Month Club and you don't want to see them, just fast forward this little bit, but do come back to watch the treat box because it's going to be a good one. Um, yeah, I think it might be a spicy one. So this is called Possum. And this is a fabulous, fabulous. It's like a... <coughs> oh, sorry folks. Neutral. And I can't work out if it's got blue or grey in it, but it's a very sort of, let's uh, let's insult our, our colour list. It's almost got like this greyish blue through it. And like I say, I can't tell whether it was a grey or a blue, but it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And then the colour this month is this one look at that isn't it fab Wowzers. 
I look like a tic tac. You know those um, orange and lime tic tacs that you get in the UK. Probably if you live in America, you won't be familiar with tic tacs. Maybe I don't know. Maybe they are American, but I look like a tic tac. <coughs> okay. Those people who didn't want to look at the fabric, you're back in the room. So, I've had this box for a couple of weeks now. I was going to do it last week, but I didn't get around to it. So, we're going to have a look at it today. This is from a company called Tri Treats. They send me boxes um, probably four or five times a year, something like that. And I've got codes for discounts off the first box. So I'll put all that information down below. But this one, and you always get, so this is a Korean box. So you always get like a little fact card and then there's a little recipe on the back there. And then there's like a little postcard there. Ness loves those. She likes having a look at those and seeing where they are. So this is from Korea. So this is how it comes. I actually haven't, other than in travel, I haven't really opened this one. So let's have a look and see what we've got. We might do half of this today and half of this next video, which I don't think will be next week because we've got some friends coming to stay. So I don't think it's going to be next week. So there probably won't be one next week, but there'll be one the week after. So what have we got? Chick Choc by Lottie. So that is a just a chocolate chip cookie. Um, butter coconut biscuit. No, that's a choco pie. That is to all intents and purposes a wagon wheel. I'm pretty convinced that's a wagon wheel. Ah, there's the butter coconut. Sweet biscuit. Which again looks like a nice biscuit or a nice biscuit. Depending on where you look. Um them little custard pies, we've had those before. I've had def definitely had those before. So, Choco Boy. Crunchy chocolate tip biscuits in the form of a mushroom. There we go. Also contains DHA, omega-3 fatty acid serving, a critical component of brain and nerve cell development. Might need that today. Um, right, what is this? Cereal Oat by Lottie. Ah, oh, they're them little badges that you, yeah, little chocolate pillows. So it's having my milk. But they're probably just edible on their own. I don't always eat cereal with milk. Does anybody else have wheat bits of butter? No milk, just put butter on it and eat it like a biscuit. It's phenomenal. Try it if you've never tried it. Although I nearly did die once trying to eat one. I was eating one in the car. I'd put some in for my lunch. Didn't eat it. I was driving home, so I thought, oh, I'll eat that Weetabix. Had the fans blowing, and a bit of the Weetabix blew off into my eye. <laughs> I had to stop. So there's those. Some little pink puffs. Strawberry corn puffs. By Cosmos. Are crunchy rice puffs in a chocolate flavour? How are they strawberry and chocolate? Not sure. Toasted seaweed. I like seaweed. And then this one. Oh, that's actually um, rice noodle snack. This ramen was made to enjoy raw. Just as you've seen in Squid Game. Well, I haven't seen Squid Game. So they want me to eat this raw. Give it a whirl. Right, I'm going to pick out a couple of things to try and then I'll save the rest for next time. So we're going to go, those I'm intrigued by, that I'm intrigued by, that one and the little biscuits. As I say, I do have drinks. I was quite expecting some spicy stuff. Right, let's have a little look, shall we then? My biggest aim today is not to joke. <laughs> these, let's start off with these. It's 
like kind of furry. That tastes like it should be a cereal. It is strawberry. Nessa's going to love those. It is strawberry. It's like a strawberry what's it? But it's almost like got like, um, if I say, I reckon they coated it in Nesquik. Strawberry Nesquik. Despite my face turning inside out the first time I tried them. All right. Ness is gonna love this. I better not eat any more of those because she will absolutely love this. Buttery coconut biscuit. I think this is a nice biscuit. The one thing I'll say about packaging, it's upgraded in uh, Korea. This is tough packaging. Oops. So they look like that. So yeah, I'm thinking that's a nice biscuit. Not getting the coconut. No, I am not getting the coconut at all. No. It's not as bad as a like a cracker for taking moisture out of your mouth. It's not coconut. Let's have a go with a little toasted seaweed. Oh, another sneezing. We've had all sorts of bodily noises today, haven't we? So it comes in a little tray like this, pretty much like the seaweed you can get in the UK. This. This is a desiccant gel. This is not salt to add to it. I remember once I had a pack of seaweed and this just wasn't labelled. There's nothing written on this at all. And I was like, is it salt? And it wasn't. I didn't eat it, but. So yeah, there's that. <coughs> now a piece of salad nearly killed me yesterday. I'm not going out on a piece of seaweed. That tastes just like seaweed. I do like it and I'll probably eat the rest of it later. Now, it says don't boil it, smash it. Four hundred and ten calories, I think. I've never seen the Squid Game. Isn't the Squid Games where most people die? It was made to be enjoyed raw. So I put the chicken powder on top. I'm not sure how this is going to improve it, but. Or am I just essentially making chicken flavoured crisps? Sometimes you get a bag of chicken crisps and they've just got literally all the flavour in. And you know, you know that every, like, the next 1,000 bags of crisps that they made had no flavour in. That's what it tastes like. It's not horrendous. Bear with. It 
it's not horrendous but it wasn't great i might try putting water on them and eat them properly instead of hunger games no squid game style that's it from me i shall see you in a couple of weeks time um i know i've forgotten i was going to do a giveaway i'm gonna i'm gonna hold that one over it's a giveaway from chrissy finally the farm girl um and she sent me two of her um witch charts and she sent me a giveaway so i'm gonna hold that over till next week or the, the week after anyway next video anyway i will catch up with you soon enjoy your stitching enjoy this warm lovely weather stay classy stitchers <laughs>